Hey guys, come on in. I'm going to talk about something today that I, I hope we can get a little bit of a debate going. Um, I'll let a few more of you jump in. I'm going to ask that you guys, if you're watching this, that you comment um, in the in the comments there when I ask a specific question. I want to see what your opinion is on this because I think it's really important. What I want to debate really quick is whether or not we should be forcing registration on our websites or not forcing registration. So go ahead and type in there before I even start talking if you want to on whether or not you believe we should force registration on our websites. Okay, now a lot of you guys that follow me are real estate agents and so for you guys specifically it's going to be IDX registrations, it's going to be home value offers. Do you believe we should or should not force registration on our website? And if you want to type in there why you believe we should or shouldn't. I was, um, I was uh, coaching uh, somebody today, I was going through their uh, their website and kind of doing a little SEO audit, audit to see how they're ranking on the search engines, what their traffic's like, and where I felt like they could improve. And uh, I can't tell you how often I notice when I do this that there is no registration on at all. There is there's no forced registration on at all. The registration settings are generally set default to. Um, if they want to inquire about a property, they re they will fill out a form. If they want to save that property, they will fill out a form, right? And uh, and by default, depending on who your IDX provider is and who your website provider is, you may or may not have um, uh, some sort of default registration settings on there. So here's I'm going to give you my opinion on this, and some of my some of what I'm doing now and I'm watching for and you can you might be able to decide what it is better that you want for your business so for those of you that that are just watching this for the first time I generate all of my business online so I run uh, multiple businesses and I have all of my life and most of my business comes from search engine optimization and social uh, social networking more than so social marketing meaning more of it is coming through organic social engagement than it is through uh, anything like paid Facebook ads although we do that as well so for me forest registration is huge because all that's how my business is built is on is on web leads right now lately I've been I've been looking at this and I've talked about this before in some of my past um, in, in some of my in my in Lori Ballen's marketing mastermind group what my opinions are on this and I've done some tests okay what I wish what I wish is that we didn't have to force registration at all that we would make an offer of some sort and the person would fill out that offer because it's something that they want not because they were required to do so right so for example if I offer a home sellers guide which by the way we should all have here's a comprehensive home sellers guide to selling your house in Las Vegas right uh, there's going to be a form that they 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 register they are offering to give us their information to get this item but on IDX we're being we're forcing them to register just to look at our website, right? And so I have something new on my website that's making me really investigate this, and it's and it's um, it's by a company that I use called Hotjar, and um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way right now, but Hotjar is where I do my heat maps, and. Anyway, there's a little, uh, a new little thing on the bottom right hand side of my website when the user goes on, on a desktop, actually I think it's there both on mobile and desktop, the user can put in their feedback. And so there's a little survey, a little box that pops open that says, how do you like our website? And I'm studying this feedback very intentionally, intentionally because what I know is this, the better our website provides uh, user experience wise, the better we're going to do on the search engines. And so I'm paying attention to what they like, what they don't like, and of course, there's a ton of little sad faces. They can put a little smiley face, a little sad face, something in the middle. Uh, they, they can put in a comment. There's a ton of sad faces on the forced registration. Well, duh, of course, okay? So let's do the math on this. Let's just say that your conversion rate for your IDX so somebody visits your website, 
how well do those convert to a lead? Let's just say, for the sake of math, that you have a phenomenal IDX and it converts at 10%, okay? Most don't, but let's just say yours does. So if you had 100 visitors to your website and 10 of 10% 10 of those became a lead, you'd have 10 leads, right? So that's a very important uh, conversion rate to measure and to test and, and pay attention to. Well, if you have 10% 10 10 of those are become leads, what happens to the other 90%? 10% become leads, what happens to the other 90%? They're gone. If you force registration and there's nowhere else for them to go, 90% in a best case scenario leave. Okay, well, if you know that and you accept that and you're fine with that, then the, smile, the little sad faces don't, don't make any difference because 90% of the people are going to be bummed, right? Well, somehow that's not sitting well with me. I'm sitting here going, gosh, that's so frustrating. I don't want 90% of my consumers that come look at properties to be disappointed with their experience. Yet, what we also know is when we turn forced registration off, the leads, what? Go away, diminish, go down, depending on how much traffic you have, right? Well, it's interesting because I turned off my forced registration yesterday morning. I was, I was getting buried in leads. Like, I can't even believe I'm saying that, but um, it, it was a lot. And I, what I noticed was, although I have automation set up for my tracking, there's still a couple holes in there we're trying to fill on some new tracking pieces that I've put into place this year and um, they're not automated yet so I have to have somebody filling in those blanks and I noticed that my virtual assistant was getting buried and behind so she was about a hundred leads behind and um, and my agents are busy buried in leads so I was like okay you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn this off right now because I really don't I I I I want to I want to test something else while I've got the ability to turn that off because nobody needs fed. There's no baby birds that need to be fed leads right now, and so I still got three leads yesterday. Uh, three wait three buyer leads yesterday. I also got three seller leads yesterday, but I, I got three buyer leads yesterday, and all three of them gave me a valid phone number, gave me a valid email, and all three requested a call or requested more information. Now, I don't know about you guys. But I prefer a lead like that over Joe Schmo at 555-555-55 at goaway at gmail.com. And that was putting it very politely. For those of you that get web leads, you know that was the edited version. That was the G version for those of you that might be watching. Okay. So um, I appreciated that experience a little bit more. I also noticed yesterday I got more positive feedback on my website. Okay. Now, this is what this does. If the users are visitors, visitors, sorry, I always say users, they're using my website. If the visitor is clicking through to more pages and the visitor is looking at more properties, what does Google decide about your website? Anybody know? Type it in there in the comment bar. What does Google think about your website if your clicks are going up and your pages or your page views are going up and your visitors spending more time on the website. Do you guys know? So what will happen is Google's going to decide that your website is valuable, that is providing a quality user experience. And what we know about 2017 SEO, search engine optimization, search engine rankings, is the better your website does with the user experience, the, the higher up in the search engine rankings you're going to go, okay? And now one of my concerns is Zillow. Not that I believe Zillow beats us across the board because they don't. I, they, they don't in all the long tails, although they're gunning for the long tails now. I've been watching something they're doing and it's a little concerning. Uh, but the, but they, they're, luckily they're still not local, so we can still beat them in the local sandbox and with the local long tail uh, keyword phrases. But Zillow's not forcing a registration, are they? When you're interested in a property, you fill out a form to request more information. It's like a contact us. But there's no forced IDX registration. They can browse all they want. They can view all they want. So I've got this kind of thought pattern right now that... Um, how can we increase traffic to increase leads 
rather than just increasing the aggressive lead capture. And will lead conversion be higher on the non-force registration leads than on the force registration leads? I guarantee you it will, okay? I guarantee it will. Now, here's, here's where we need, uh, we definitely need registration. So these home values, right? We all wanna get listings online. So yesterday I got three listings online and um, all three have equity, which is great here in Vegas. I get a ton of, regist of um, listing leads that don't have equity, okay? And I'm finding out that data two ways, by the way. So I have a home value calculator, which is one of the top search terms in the United States for real estate is home values, home value calculator, home value estimator, how much is my house worth, all that good stuff. But instant home valuations is what everybody wants, and they're actually Googling that because they know they can go online and get it. And a lot of times they'll fill out this information and they'll, they'll, have, they'll have no equity. Well, I can see that two ways. The tool that I use for my home valuation um, calculator is from listings to leads. And if you haven't checked out that tool yet, use my link and you'll get an extended free trial. And you can find that at listings to leads.com slash ballen, B-A-L-L-E-N. So listings, T-O, leads.com slash Ballen, B-A-L-L-E-N. They'll give you a, a free, uh, a, an extended trial rather than just a regular one. So they also have a service where it will, um, it will scour the web and it pulls in the public data and it's partnered with Cole Realty Source. And if you get a partial lead that is just an email on that home value or something, it scours the web, it pulls, goes in through Cole Realty and it pulls in additional information. So like a phone number, um, the estimated home value, what they might owe on the house, it's kind of giving you an idea for whether or not they have equity. I also love, and I'm not affiliated with Realty Track, and I have a paid subscription with Realty Track. And if I put in the address at Realty Track, I can also see how long they owned the house, which tells me a lot about whether or not they're really a potential seller or not. If the name who registered on the home valuation tool is the actual owner, that helps me a lot. Um, how, long the, how long they've owned the house, whether or not they're the actual owner, how much they owe on the house and how much the estimated home is worth, right? And so there they're registering. Now that's crucial information, okay? And so for me, um, I'm not just gonna spit out a home value without them registering, but I do think they should be able to look at more homes without registering. So it's kind of a tough thing. So the girl I was talking to this morning when I was evaluating her website, um, I, I asked her what she what her intentions were with forced registration I and mean, maybe she's watching today uh, because she didn't have it on from what I could tell it wasn't on and uh, we talked about whether or not she wanted this massive number of leads which are going to be a large percentage of people that already have a real estate agent um, they are three years out from buying a house they're not qualified whatever which Believe me, I still find validity in all that as well. There's two sides to all of that. Um, and Or if she would prefer to get leads that are more interested in a specific property that she could respond to them or that set up a search or the download a home buyer's guide. And um, she actually said she'd rather have a less aggressive forced registration, allow them to view more pages, allow them to spend more time on the website, and then only the more interested would actually um, submit. So for example, on a lot of these registration settings, you could say, you know what, let them look at five houses before they have to register, or let them look at 10 pages, or let them be on my website for five minutes. Well, don't, I wouldn't suggest that because yeah, you know, it, take a look at what your average person is on your website and base it on that. On my real estate website, I believe we're at four and a half minutes. And so for me, if my average customer is on there four and a half minutes and I put it at five, that's probably not real smart. So I might put it at four, right? And so then they're getting to shop around, they're doing a whole lot. And then I know if somebody has spent that long on my website, I've got a, probably a lot more viable consumer on there. And then I can set the registration based on how long they're actually on there. You know, so you guys have, I haven't seen you put in, are you putting in your comments there, whether or not you believe forced registration is, uh, is something we must have specifically as real estate agents. Do you think, do, we, do you think we need to have it? 
Or do you think it's better to let them search around? I also think your business model makes a, a huge difference, you know? Are you like me where your, your, um, your real estate web leads come from uh, through your website primarily? If so, then you might then you might need that more aggressive force registration. Are you trying to feed a buyer's team like you've got all these hungry baby birds here that you're you're sending leads through? I talk to big teams all the time that say, you know what, Lori, just help me get leads for my buyer's agents. I just want to make sure my buyer's agents are fed and just keep them leads pumping through. So to them, the more leads, the better. And it, and and it might not even be quantifiable as to how many of those close because they know they need to get X amount just to keep their their agents pumping through those and and bringing in then then bringing in their leads as well, right? And so a more forced registration is is going to be more likely. You know, it's interesting. I was uh, um, on a, on another note. I was talking uh, to somebody about budgets this morning and about marketing budgets. And uh, do you guys know, based on your total commissions for a year, first of all, you need to know that number. How, ma how much do you make in commissions a year? Do you know how much you're supposed to be spending on marketing? So I did the math. Um, I posted a little bit earlier. If you're making $100,000 in commissions so these are your these these are this is your gross commission hundred thousand dollars do you know how much you're supposed to spend on marketing out of that hundred thousand dollars so using the original MREA millionaire real estate agent model you would be spending between 10 and 15 percent on your marketing dollars I don't know what MREA 2 says if anybody knows let me know um, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know what the marketing budget is. So what happens is you have a you bring you bring in a hundred thousand dollars, okay? So that's that that's a hundred percent. That's a hundred one percent, right? You bring in a hundred thousand dollars. What are you going to spend that on? Okay. So first thing you figure out is well, how profitable do I want to be? I'm, I'm building a business here. How profitable do I want to be? Well, what if you said my intention is to keep 50% of that business in profits, okay? Let's just assume, I'm just picking a number. And for most big teams, that is not the number, by the way. Maybe when you're first starting off as an agent, but once you start building, 50% is generally not the team model. So let's just say you're at 50%. So 50% of that $100,000 is gonna be my profit and I'm gonna keep 50,000, okay? Now I'm just using small, rounded numbers for easy math sake, okay? So 50,000, and by the way, that is more than the average real estate agent makes in the state of Nevada. I think we're at 44,000 is the average, uh, what an average agent out here makes, okay? So if you're making 100,000 in GCI, if you're making $50,000 of profits, you're doing, you're doing pretty darn good. All right, so the other 50,000 then gets spent on what? Phone, licensing, insurances, marketing, education, salaries, bookkeepers, licensed professionals, accountants, you know, any of that kind of stuff that all falls into that uh, 50%, right? So if you're spending 10% of that on your marketing, it's going to leave you another 40%. Where does that 40% go? So what you do is you sit down with a basic spreadsheet and you figure it out and you say, okay, well, based on, let's see, what is 1% of 100,000? Do I spend that much on education? Do I spend 2% on education? Do I spend 3% on education, okay? If, if the model allows for 3%, I, I assure you that, that most of us are spending more than a few thousand dollars on education. So if you're getting a lot of training, I'll give you an example, um, coaching. How many of you guys are in coaching? So you're spending, you know, $500 a month, $1,000 a month on coaching? That's your education budget. That has to go into that education budget. So when you sit down and you figure, okay, I've got 100% of this $50,000, I'm gonna put 5,000 a year of that on education. Well, if you have a $1,000 a month coach, you're in $12,000 right there already on education. Of course, a coach is gonna help you get from 100,000 to 200,000 to 300,000 to 400,000, so, so, so it might be a good investment, right? As long as you're doing the actions and holding those accountable. 
Then you take a look at it and go, oh, well, I'm a Keller Williams agent, gosh. So I go to Family Reunion and I go to Mega Camp and I go to Masterminds and I love to go to all of the career visioning. Oh, and wait, I also take my buyer's agent and I take my listing agent and I take my whatever and all of a sudden now you're in what, $10,000 a year, $20,000 a year on education, $30,000 a year on education, whatever it is, that's now X percent of whatever that, that budget was that you make, right? So you have to allocate it. I make this, this is going to be my education budget. Then you're going to bill in, okay, how much do I spend on my licensing? How much do I spend on my insurances? Now, the mistake that most people make is they do all that first and then they get down to the bottom and go, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm a big web lead generator, so I'll just spend 3% on marketing. Big mistake. Big mistake because you grow out of your marketing budget, right? You you grow out of generating leads and bringing in bringing in more leads. So if you cut your marketing budget out, that's going to cut your growth. Okay. So I would highly suggest that you start at the top and let's start with a minimum of ten percent. So if you've got a hundred thousand, you're bringing in. $10,000 should be spent on marketing. Okay, now what, what goes into marketing? Your website, your business cards, your yard signs, your car signs, your um, Facebook ads, your pay-per-click marketing, um, your direct mail. Uh, if you're a real estate agent like me who generates a lot of business through referrals, we're, we're sending out thank yous like brownies and things for referrals. Those are marketing expenses generally speaking right and so the, those are all going to go into that marketing budget now if I decide I want that marketing budget to be 15% instead of 10% the other five has to be cut from somewhere else that I have to pull that five from somewhere else okay so that's where you start looking at the other pieces and going okay is there anything I can shave off of here is there anything I can shave off of here let me tell you the mistake real estate agents make this is really important Real estate agents tend, well, they tend to not create a budget, first of all, which we know, and that's, we need to do that. You know, we need to have a P&L statement and we need to have a budget. What most real estate agents do is they create that budget model and they say, okay, I'm going to spend $10,000 on marketing and then they spend 15 because they don't hold it accountable. They're not paying attention, um, you know, because they're out doing deals, which I understand, but those, those they don't do spend as much time in their finances in the books. And then all of a sudden, first quarter's over, which we're here right now, so first quarter's over, and you go, dang it, I, why don't I have any money? January, February, March, let's see, I brought in $25,000, I brought in 50, I brought in 100, I brought in 500, whatever it is for you, and, but I don't have any money left over. Why don't I have any money left over? You know why? Because you overspent on those expense categories, and then guess where it has to come out of? There's only one spot left that it could possibly come out of. It's the bottom line. Well, where, what's, where's the bottom line go? In your pocket. It comes out of your profit. Got nothing left. So I'm going to leave you with this because i got to get to an appointment. Um, if you haven't already done so, it's the end of first quarter, and now is the time to take a look at your P&L statement. What did I spend? What was I trying to earn? What was I trying to spend? What did I actually do? And what was my profit? Okay, so now let me correct this if there's any problems. If there's not, fantastic. That's wonderful. Let me address this and go, okay, well, what, did, what didn't happen? I didn't get enough leads. I didn't do, have enough appointments. I didn't take enough listings. I didn't have enough buyers. I didn't have enough closings. But yet I still spent 10% on marketing and I still spent... So, so that's why it came out. Of, so then you adjust by saying, okay, I need to do more of those activities. I need to spend more time in Legion. I need to get more appointments. You don't cut your expenses. You go do more of those activities, right? But if you're doing the activities and your business is growing, but your bank account's not growing, you've probably got something off in that, um, in that budget somewhere. So um, anyway, I always think about this stuff at the end of first quarter, reevaluate where are we going, how are we doing, are we on track for the year, um, that type of thing. And, um, and that's what I want to share with you guys today. So go out there and have a fantastic week. And um, I will talk at y'all later.